الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلیہ وصحبہ وسلم ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وحب لنا من دونك رحمة انك انت الوحاب وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد continue on with part 2 with the discussion and clarification and to very quickly mention that we're discussing some of the reasons why there's differences between the ulama and how they deal with those differences. The ulama of Ahl Sunnah, not the ulama of Ahl Bid'ah, or those ulama who yukhalif kitabi wa sunnah. And this is, in, uh, this is pertaining to a particular brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and bless him for his concern in that he asked why I quoted from one of the Mashaykh uh, whose affair has been made clear by uh, several major scholars from Ahl Sunnah or several major scholars and none of them endorse his view so why have I quoted from this particular individual and also he also sent something saying that you know for the student of knowledge that they should make the truth be known so as not to mislead the people. You know, that perhaps by quoting from this particular scholar, that this may cause the people to be misled because knowing certain things, maybe this scholar made a mistake or certain scholars have spoken about him uh, in a particular issue or what have you, that the people may be led astray by this. So this was my response. And first we began by mentioning Sheikh al-Islam's statement and uh, in his treatise, Rafa al-Malam an Aimata al-Alam, and he mentioned that it boiled down to three uh, excuses for an alam a sunnah to reject something from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Meaning that these are the times when it's excusable. Firstly, is that he believes that the Prophet ﷺ didn't say that statement, meaning that he believes the hadith is daif, or it didn't, the evidence didn't come to him. That, that evidence, that hadith, uh, he never came across that evidence. So in that sense, because they didn't come across that evidence and they made a fatwa or they made a, some ijtihad in a particular issue, then they would be excused. And the second thing Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned was that عدم اتقاده ارادت تلك مسألتي بذلك القول that the person that the 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 sheikh or the alim uh, didn't believe that uh, that the evidence or the statement could be a nas from the Quran, uh, nas from the sunnah of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that they believe that it might not be useful as evidence for the particular issue at hand. So for example, the ulama, they talk about the wajh uh, dalala, uh, dalail or dalala, in which how evidence is being used, because someone can easily give you ayats and they can give you athar uh, um, or the salaf and they can give you uh, uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but it may not be how the Salaf understood it the way they use it as evidence they could use it as evidence they could misuse the evidence and that's what the ulama mean by the wajah dalal uh, and this is uh, for those who have ilm and fiqh who understand the nusus and understand how the Salaf Salaf uh, how they understood the nusus and how they understood the text. The third reason why uh, an alim would be an excuse for having a position which went against uh, uh, a hadith or the statement of the Prophet وسلم, went against the sunnah is that they believed that the hukum, the ruling that is taken from that nus, from that text, is abrogated. So that's the third reason Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned. Now we'll get on to establishing what is imperative for and an obligation for us to, uh, to establish and that is how we 
uh, understand Islam. And that means we go back to the Nasus. The Nasus is imperative for the Muslim to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een that that is what is considered uh, evident or considered evidence in the Sharia that they look to the, the Quran they look to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they look to the ijma the consensus that's what's considered dalil dalil is not the call of an alam unless that alam's call is backed up by the the nusus that it is muwafiqa with the asl which is the nusus so that that shows us that as we mentioned the statement shaykh al-islam that anyone uh, everyone's statements can be refuted except the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we're going to get we're going to make clear from this from the aqwal of the Salaf al-Salih as we continue on with our discussion so we have to talk about the usul and the usul that we're discussing is ta'atillah wa ta'at rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabil kareem qul ati'u allah wa rasula fa in tawallaw fa inna allah la yuhibbul kafirin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran say follow allah and and the messenger and if you turn or if you reject uh, a turn from this, then know that Allah does not love the kafirin. Waqala subhana wa atiullaha wa rasulu la alakum tarhamun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and follow Allah and follow the messenger in order that you uh, in order that you will have mercy upon you. Waqala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al kareem Ya yuladina amanu wa ti ullaha wa ati rasula wa ulil emri minkum fa intanazatum fi shayin fa kud uh faruduhu ilallahi wa rasuli in kuntum tuk minuna billahi wulium al akhir thalika khairun wa asanu ta'wila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, so this is addressing the believers, O you who believe, follow Allah and follow the messenger and those who are in authority from amongst you. And if you disagree, this is the crux of what we're talking about here. If you disagree in something, then return it back to Allah and return it back to the Messenger. If you really uh, believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment, that is uh, suitable that is most suitable for you and the final determination that is what is the final judgment the final judgment is by returning it back to the Quran and the Sunnah how do we turn it back we turn it back to the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's how we return it back to Allah we turn our affairs when we have an issue we disagree disagreements between Ahlul Sunnah disagreements between Ahlul Bid'ah whatever we return it to the Quran and we return it to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and and we of course and you ask the scholars if you don't know. And this is the suitable and final determination. This is the judgment. This is how we reach the judgment. So it's, it's going to the nasus, it's going back to the Quran and the Sunnah when we differ about issues. And when we look at differences of opinion, if we look at this person is a mubtadi, well, why is he a mubtadi? This person is this. Uh, this person is a fasik, well, why? How does that go with the nasus? Oh, they said this. But isn't that in agreement with the Nasus? Or no, you're right. It isn't in agreement with the Nasus. It isn't in agreement with the Quran. It isn't in agreement with the Sunnah of the Prophet. It isn't in agreement with the consensus of the Salaf al-Sali. So this is how we make our determination. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَعْوِيلًا That is most suitable and for the final determination. That's the judgment based on Kitab wa Sunnah. قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَلَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَأَتِيُوا اللَّهَ وَأَتِيُوا رَسُولُ وَأَحْذَرُوا وَأَحْذَرُوا فَإِن تَوَلَيْتُمْ فَعْلَمُوا إِنَّمَا عَلَى رَسُولِنَا بَلَاغٌ مُبِينٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then follow Allah and follow the Messenger and be warned for, uh, and that if you turn, then know that verily you're, uh, if they turn away from you, then verily uh, that the 
our, our messenger is sent as a um, to to give the to 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 give the message to propagate the message with clarity. That's the wadifa, one of the jobs of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and all the NBA alim after salatu wasalam. Wa qala subhana ya yuladina amanu wa tiyu Allah wa tiyu ya yuladina amanu wa tiyu Allah wa Rasuluhu wa wa la tawallu anhum anhu wa antum tasmaun. O you who believe, follow Allah and His Messenger, and do not turn uh, away from Him. Uh, away from him, wa antum tasmaun, and you uh, are listening. Wa qala subhana, wa yuqooluna amin billahi wa bi rasuli wa wa atta'na, thumma yatawalla farikum minhum min baadi thalik, wa ma ulaika bil mu'minin. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in the Quran, uh, and uh, they say, we believe in Allah and the Messenger. And we follow. Then a group from amongst them uh, turns away after that. And verily, they are not believers, those who turn away. So that's some of the evidence from the Quran that we have to follow and use that as our, our uh, to give us the, the basira and how to see and how to look at issues. We have to go to the Quran and the Sunnah. And we go to the understanding <coughs> of the Salaf al-Salih, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. That's some of the evidence from the Kitab Allah. And then from the Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala uh, an Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu an anabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ba'athahu wa mu'adhin ila Yemen. Faqal, yassara وَلَا تُعَسِّرَ وَبَشِّرَ وَلَا تُنَفِّرَ وَتَطَّاوَعَ وَلَا تَخْتَلِفَ So, uh, Abi Musa al-Ash'ari رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم sent him and Mu'adh to Yemen رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين And he said to them, uh, be easy and do not be difficult. And give glad tidings, invite, and do not re- uh, make the people flee from you by being harsh and, 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 and difficult and, and what have you. Uh, and be, uh, to, you know, holding on together and, and holding on and do not differ. So hold on with obedience to Allah and do not differ. And then in the hadith, there are ample ayats and hadith showing us the importance of following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we'll end with one uh, very important hadith which shows us when there's differences when we have differences between our scholars we have differences between our students of knowledge differences between one another what should we do? the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said اتقوا الله uh, قال صلى الله عليه وسلم اتقوا الله وإن عبد هبشي قال صلى الله عليه وسلم in one narration of it, Isma'u wa ati'u wa in istu'mila alaykum abdun habashi ka'anna rasuhu zabiba. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said, listen and obey. Even if there was an Ethiopian slave whose head was like a raisin, was the leader of you. That shows us to hear and obey the leadership. But in the rest of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بعدي فسيرى اختلاف كثيرة فعليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين عذوا عليها بالنواذج وإياكم محتثر الأمور فإن كل بدعة ضلالة The Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said in another narration of that same hadith صلوات ربي وسلام عليه he said that قال صلى الله عليه وسلم that uh, whoever lives after me, فَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْ كُمْ بَعْدِي Whoever lives after me, فَسَيَرَى اِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا They'll see many differences. And what do we see, especially in this time, and it's only going to increase. The one thing we have to realize, the fitna will increase, as is evidence in the hadith of Hudayfa bin Yaman, رضي الله تعالى عنه. So we'll know that after the fitna, there will come more trials. What did the Prophet sallallahu say as علاج, as a medicine? فَعَلَيْكَ إِذْ قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ فَسَيَرَى اِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا You're going to see many differences. 
differences. For alaykum bi sunnati. So it is upon you my sunnah. Wa sunnat al khulafa rashidin al mahdin. It's returning back to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the the khulafa rashidin Abu Bakr, uh, uh, Umar, Uthman, wa Ali radiyallahu ta'ala ajma'in. So returning back, returning our fares back to them. You know, to how they practice, how they understood it, what was their creed, how they deal with issues in, 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 in manners, how they deal with an etiqad, how was it in their, uh, uh, in, in their, their dawah, in their minhaj, their methodology of spreading Islam. All of that, we go back to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and his rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Adu alayha bi nawadij. Grab it, hold on to it, bite on to it, cling on to it with your molar teeth. Uh, and beware of newly, invented matter, newly in, innovated matters for every innovation is a leading astray and every, astray, uh, every going astray leads to the hellfire that is sufficient for us how to deal with this mashakil how to deal with these problems we have to go back to kitab wa sunnah and that we have to have those tools but we're going to give more details from who? from the ulama from the salaf asali and then to our scholars up until this time how to deal with these kind of issues when we have these differences what do we do when a, some, a two or three or four or more scholars are t- from Ahlul Sunnah are st- talking about another well-known from scholar from Ahlul Sunnah. Usually, that's an indication there is an issue that maybe there's a mistake from that individual or that in- individual could have went astray. But also, it is upon the person who has any level of talab al ilm in the home that they are that they are a student of knowledge at all, and they're able to look at the evidences and read what's going on. They have to read. They have to. They have to read. It isn't blind following. You have to read and go back to make up your own mind before you make a ruling and before you, uh, not even, it's not for you to make those rulings, but you, you are practicing the religion. People are going to ask you. So before you begin going on the minbar and warning about this one and bringing this, these lights to other people, then you have to be on ilm wa fiqh wa basira. And if you don't know, then you, you, you stop there. And... فَرَدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ And if you're unable to do that, فَأَسَلَ أَحْلِ ذِكْرٍ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge. And who says that we haven't asked the people of knowledge about these particular issues? And this is the important thing to realize. Not everything is always apparent, but sometimes, you know, we just strive our best to fear Allah and try to practice the religion in that which is going to be beneficial for us. And we have some beautiful speech from Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan coming up about these very issues. Well, the third thing I wanted to mention here, after establishing that foundation, we have to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. That's what we're commanded to, commanded to do, and the understanding of the Salaf Asali, radiAllahu taala anhu majmaeen. We want to go back to the importance of the Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who said, "Adina nasiha, adina nasiha, kul na liman, kala lillahi wa li kitabi wa li rasuli wa li." أئمة المسلمين وعامتهم وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the religion is sincere advice. And they said to who? He said to Allah, to His Messenger, which is following Allah and being obedient to His His the Book of Allah, following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa taala, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and His Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام following the Sunnah, loving the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, loving the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. By listening and hearing and obeying the Muslim rulers in that which is righteous and those things which go against the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law, we don't obey them in that, but that does not nullify all of their ta'a. This is part of nas for them and advising them with sincere advice. And also the general Muslimin. We also do this. In regards to this type of nas, this type of, uh, of, of, of nasiha, this type of advice, Sheikhs, uh, uh, we, we need to go to the speech of Sheikh uh, Abdul Musan al al Abad. Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of the major scholars uh, in Medina, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, Muhaddith, Alam, who it was related to me that Shaykh, Shaykhana, Shaykh Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah Yarhamahu, said he is the Muhaddith Jazirat al Arab, or Kamaqal. And that, that Shaykh Abdul Masin was the, uh, and he doesn't need much praise, he's well known uh, to the people. Qal al Shaykhana, Shaykh Abdul Masin, half of Allah Ta'ala with regards to these very issues and about giving nas, uh, nasiha. Qala shaykh, women al nas li ahl sunnah, anna men akhtaa minhum 
ينبه على خط على خطيئه ولا يتابع عليه ولا يتبرا منه بسبب ذلك ويستفاد منه لا سيما اذا لم يوجد من هو اولى منه في العلم وفضل beautiful statement and advice from this alim muhaddith قال, he said and from the advice to ahl sunnah so this is relevant to the hadith we just read and from the from the ways in which we give nasah nasah to uh, uh, ahl sunnah give advice to them is that when they when uh, an individual from amongst them makes a mistake then we uh, advise him and we make it uh, known his mistake you know we make it known to him and and if it's necessary to the community so they don't fall into that of course but we do not follow up on his mistakes meaning going through searching through his tapes searching through his books going and going and going and going to find more mistakes and following up on that and we don't turn our backs on them you know, we don't free ourselves from them uh, b- due to that mistake. But rather, he is benefited from. And especially if you don't find who is, uh, f- who, someone else from Ahl Sunnah who is more, uh, who has more knowledge and more uh, fadl or benefit than this particular individual. So this might be the situation in a particular ballad. This is my ta'liqat here, that you may be in another place, you may be in a particular city or locality, that this person may be a person from Ahl Sunnah, but they have some mistakes, okay? And you warn them about those mistakes and you try to advise them and you also let the people know about those mistakes without belittling them, but they are the most knowledgeable from amongst you. Then you shouldn't try to bring this individual down, you should try to benefit from this individual. And this is what the Nasus shows us, and this is what Kathratu Ulama Ahl Sunnah make it clear for us from the Salaf up until now. Then the Shaykh said, Wa Usi and Yuhavra Shababu min ishtigali bi tatabu uh atharat al tulab al ilm wa tatabu Mawakil uh, internet alati to anni bi jemi utharat utharatihim wa tahdir minhum bi sababiha. So, this is a beautiful advice. The Shaykh, this alam, this muhaddith gave us this advice. He says, and I advise that the, sh- the youth should be warned from busying themselves and following up the stumblings or the mistakes of the students of knowledge. This is Alam, this Alam is saying this. And following, and following up these internet sites, these websites, uh, which uh, collect the mistakes of them, of the students of knowledge, and warn against them. وَتَحْذِرْ minhum bi sababiha, And that they warn because of that, uh, they warn against them for this reason. So, the, so beware of those, those websites that all they're doing is collecting the mistakes of the people. That you, you're not increasing your iman from that. That's my ta'liqat, that's not what the shaykh said, but this is the ma'na of the kalam of the shaykh and it's ma'roof Uh And then the shaykh said, Hafidullah ta'ala, قال الشيخ حفظ الله تعالى قال then he gave us some اثر the salaf here he said قال الإمام شاط شاطبي في الاتصام وقال عبد الرحمن بن مهدي قد سئل مالك ابن أنس عن السنة قال هي ما لا اسم له غير السنة وتلا وأن هذا صراطي مستقيم فاتبعوا ولا تعتبيوا سبل فتفرق بكم عن سبيله. So uh, Imam Shatabi said in his book Al Ittisam, he said that uh, uh, Abd Rahman ibn Mahdi said that Imam Malik ibn Anas or Malik ibn Anas was asked about the Sunnah, and he said that it is that which there is no name for it except the sunnah and then he read the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and verily this is my straight path then follow it and do not follow the other paths which divide onto other uh, to the, the various paths and then وقال ibn al-qayyim fi madarak 
في مدارج الصالكين وقد سئل بعض الأئمة عن السنة. Some of the imams were asked about the sunnah. قال ما لا اسم له سوى سنة. يعني أن أهل السنة ليس أن أهل السنة ليس لهم اسم ينصبون إليه سواه. So he said some of the imams uh, in the past they have been asked about the sunnah. And he said that they said that, that it is that which has no name for it uh, or other than it, uh, no name for it than other than the sunnah. Meaning that Ahlul Sunnah, uh, they don't have an, a, a na- another name that they call themselves by like that. And that doesn't negate calling yourself Salafi, that doesn't negate calling yourself Ahla Athar, Ahla Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. All of those Al Qab, those names for Ahla Sunnah and the people who follow the Messenger, messenger of Allah وسلم, and the Salaf al Salih, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anum Ajma'een, they all have a, a, a Sinid, they all have a Dalil from either the Quran or the Sunnah uh, and, and the, uh, the Salaf al Salih, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anum Ajma'een. وقال وفي كتاب الانتقال ابن عبد ابن عبد بر أن الرجل سأل مالك فقال من أهل السنة قال أهل السنة قال أهل السن أهل السنة الذين ليس لهم لقب يعرفون به لا جهمي ولا قدري ولا رافضي so Imam Malik was asked, uh, uh, Imam Malik was asked about that a man asked Imam Malik, and then Imam Malik respond, or the man asked, who is Ahlul Sunnah? So Imam Malik responded, Rahimahullah Taala. He said, Ahlul Sunnah, they are those who there is no name, other name for them, that they are known by. Not Jahmi, meaning the Jahmiyyah of the Jahmiyyah, those who negated the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the meanings of it and the names. Wala Qadri, the people, uh, the, the, the Qadriya, those people who, who denied the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the, the Jabriya, which is also another Taifa in a Qadriya, who said that we're forced to do the deeds that we, and that we have no choice in the matter. So they're both uh, those people, they're known as Qadri. Wala Rafidi, meaning like the Rafidi Shia, wa i'ad bin la minhum. Waqal, then the Shaykh said, Shaykh Abdul Masin, he said, Wala shak, enna al wajiba ala ahl sunnati, fi kulli zaman, wa makan, ta'alif, wa tarahim, fi him. Uh, uh, he said, and it's no doubt that it is an obligation upon Ahlul Sunnah in every time and every place to strive to bring their hearts together and to have mercy upon one another. Have mercy between them, mercy upon one another. And cooperate in righteousness and God fearfulness and taqwa. In obedience to Allah, and then we call a sheikh. Wa inna mimma Yusuf lahu fi hadha zaman ma hasla min baad ahl sunnah min wahsha wal ikhtilaf mimma taratib alayhi al inshigal baadhum bi baad tajrihin wa tahdirin wa hajrin wa kana wajib أن تكون جهودهم جميعا موجهة إلى غيرهم من الكفار وأهل البدع المناوئين لأهل السنة وأن يكونوا فيما بينهم متألفين متراحمين ويذكر بعضهم بعضا برفق ولين beautiful beautiful statement of the alim Rabbani قال الشيخ and he said And he said, and what has been described with this time, described within this time, what we see in this time, is what has come about, what, what has happened between some of Ahlul Sunnah. He didn't say, uh, take off, some of Ahlul Sunnah from differences and from 
uh, from from their differences, and what has resulted in them being busy, some of them being busy with others, being busy uh, with others by having enmity and criticizing them and warning against them and making hajr or cutting them off. And he said, and it is an obligation that they should be putting these efforts, all their efforts, all of it, into going against those who people, people who oppose them from the disbelievers and from Ahl al-Bid'ah who, who are hostile to Ahl al-Sunnah and that they should between uh, they should between them be uh, 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 merciful and be striving to take care of one another's heart and to uh, remind one another remind each other and be gentle and uh, kind with one another. Those are beautiful statements from this Alam Rabbani that we should take. This is one of the Kibar Ulama. Although he's not on the, 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 the panel of Kibar Ulama, and it's well known uh, his being from amongst the students, him being offered this position from his Alam and his Fadl. He, he's an Alam Rabbani. We should take his advice and follow his advice. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam going back to the Nasus, Kulu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata'ina tawabun. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, all the children of Adam make mistakes and the best of those are those who repent. The best of those people who sin are those people who uh, repent. Then I want to read a last thing of this Alam Rabbani which talks specifically about our issue of when an Alam from Ahl Sunnah just related to this hadith. Qal al-Shaykh or this is Naqla Shaykh, وَمَا أَحْسِنْ قُولْ إِمَامْ مَالِكْ رَحِمْهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He said, and what a beautiful statement, the statement of uh, Imam Malik, رَحِمْهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى who said, كُلٌّ يُخُذْ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ وَيُرُدْ إِلَّا صَاحِبَ هَذَا قَبْرِ وَيَشِيرَ إِلَى قَبْرِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Imam Malik was teaching in the Haram. And he said, everyone... Uh, their statements might can be taken from or they can be re- rejected except the inhabitant of that grave and then he pointed to the grave in the direction of the grave of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there doesn't need explanation قال الشيخ وهذه نقول عن جماعة من أهل العلم في تقرير وتوضيح اغتفار خطى العالم في صوابه الكثير. He said, and th- he said, then this is what we say uh, that we say on a jama that we relate uh, we we'll relate on a, a, a huge group of the scholars from Ahl al-Ilm about making clear the forgiveness of the mistake of an alam. For an alam who has a lot of, they were correct in many things, but they made a mistake in this thing. And we can mention ample evidence, and this is on the Talib al Ilm, to go and, and research this. But it, it's so, it's like the sun, it's so clear. Let's read some of the statements from the Salaf al Saleh, who, whom we follow, bi idnillah ta'ala. Qala Sa'id ibn Musayyib. رضي الله تعالى عنه one of the tabi'een he said ليس من عالم ولا شريف ولا شريف ولا ذو الفضل إلا وفيه عيب he said there isn't a, a, an alam or someone who has high position or someone who is possesses great benefit except that they have an, a shortcoming they have an عيب وَلَكِنْ مَنْ كَانَ فَضْلُهُ أَكْثَرْ مِنْ نَقْصِهِ ذَهَبَ نَقْصِهِ لِفَضْلِهِ كَمَا أَنَّهُ مَنْ غَلَبَ عَلَيْهِ نَقْسَانِهِ ذَهَبَ فَضْلِهِ Beautiful, beautiful statement. And he said, Sayyid bin Musayyib, he said, رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said, uh, and however, there isn't a person who, that, 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 
وَمَنْ كَانَ فَضْلُهُ أَكْثَرُ The person who has more benefit and is from his shortcomings or his mistakes, then his mistakes, they go away. They disappear from his benefit. Similar to the way that the person whose mistakes and sins are overwhelm his benefit, then his benefit goes away. And then وَقَالَ غَيْرَهُ And then someone else other from him, some of the others, the Salaf or the ulama from the past, لا يسلم العالم من الخطأ فمن أخطأ قليلا وأصاب كثيرا فهو عالم ومن أصاب قليلا وأخطأ كثيرا فهو جاهل This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful statement and it was uh, a statement which was related in Jami' al-Bayan al-Ilm wa fadluhu li Ibn Abdul Barr So this is a statement uh, from his book and he said this beautiful statement he said there is not an alam that escapes from making a mistake or that is free from mistakes so whoever makes few mistakes and makes many and is correct most of the time is correct kathir a lot then he's an alam and whoever is correct very little times and they make many mistakes then he is jahil he's ignorant beautiful way on how to deal with this issue and there's kathra to akwala the salaf that we we could sit all day and all night speaking about those akwala the salaf but we want to gain the benefit that yes if we see from an alam or an, uh, a scholar from Ahlul Sunnah, or even a Talib al Alm, or even a Da'i of Ahlul Sunnah, that's known. Their Asul is from Ahlul Sunnah. This is their creed. This is their Minhaj. This is their methodology. This is their their manners. That <clears throat> then this person we should look at. Did they just fall into a couple of errors? Even if it's an error in creed or an error in Minhaj, they can be corrected. They can come back. We should give them time, shouldn't we? Or should we run, post it on the internet, spread it with the youth, spread it with the people? This is the question we have for us. And the reason I bring this up, and it's not from me. This is from my seeking knowledge with ulama, many ulama that I've sat in their durus and I've heard it from them. Wilillah alhamd. So you can go to the books and you can find it. You can listen to the tapes and you'll find it kathir, kathir, kathir. And go to those many ulama like Bin Baz, wa Al-Albani, wa uh, Sheikh Mukhbil, wa Bin Uthameen, wa kathir, kathir, kathir that are living now. Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan, uh, Sheikh Abdul Masin al abad and other than them kathir. May Allah have mercy upon them all and bless them all. These are the main things I wanted to, to say and respond. As far as my particular position, first, the Shaykh is well known for, being, for his service to the Sunnah and refuting Ahl Bid'ah and his numerous scholarly works detailing the principles of Ahl Sunnah. Number two, I've read and listened to some of the criticisms and alleged mistakes and read the Shaykh's defense and which is very scholarly and which it has let me to know that this issue is above my head and I leave it and it's not for something for me to engage in I benefit from the from the Shaykh and I don't know anyone even from those scholars who criticize him who say that he's not from Ahl Sunnah anymore I know that some of the criticisms are harsh but None of them that I know of to this date, and nor do I spend time going on the websites and listening to the latest poll, especially from the ulama. We're not talking about the students, because this is where a lot of the fitna comes from, is from, unfortunately, even some of the quote-unquote kibar students of knowledge. A lot of them, especially on those websites, in Arabic, Min, so min baba ola in English and the other languages. It's in Indonesia, it's in Ethiopian, it's in English, it's in Arabic. First and foremost, we see these same behaviors and may Allah forgive us and unite the hearts of Ahl Sunnah. So I'm not defending if it is a mistake, this particular issue or other issues. I don't defend the Shaykh in any of his mistakes, nor do I defend anyone in their mistakes because we believe that as Imam Malik said, Sahiba had a qabr, meaning the qabr, the qabr of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the only one who we have ittiba' 
kamil with in following completely. Because our scholars, they, they yusib wa yukhti. And if a person has some knowledge to where they can discern the haq between battle, wajib and yet tabi al haq. As many of our ulama mention a statement of the salaf, yaraf al haq, yaraf al rijal, la yaraf al haq bi rijal, wa lakin yaraf al rijal bil haq. That we don't know the truth by men, but rather we know the men by the truth. So we judge the men in accordance with the truth. We judge in the statement of any scholar. It doesn't matter if he's Sheikh so and so, he's from the Kibar ulama, he's from this. We, it has to judge, it has to go through the same filter. Kitabillah, who sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa fahama salaf And if we find that there's issue, then we go to another scholar to ask clarity on this. But we don't need to go and spread, and spread, and spread, and contribute to the fire that's already burning out of control. Another point I wanted to make, uh, as for endorsing, as it was mentioned, the, the brother, may Allah preserve him, he mentioned that I am endorsing him, and that possibly I could be spreading fitna by uh, not taking uh, the stance of those particular scholars, or that maybe I'm endorsing his position. I don't take the Sheikh's position uh, about certain issues. In fact, you'll probably find that you won't take agree with every every sheikh on every issue. Even your own sheikh, you study with him, and you benefited from him, even perhaps for years. And you may not agree with everything. When you have the tools to be able to discern, and if you're able to discern, so this is imperative, uh, imperative. Anything that comes to me that is clearly not correct, that it comes to me and it's been made clear to me, and the per, the the people who have made it clear. Uh, it's not clear that they, hey, we've made it clear to you, brother. What's your position now? No. Is it, in cl- is it clear that I understand it, meaning it's in accordance with Kitabillah, with Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with Salaf al-Salih, Minhaj al-Salaf al and I understand that. This is what's imperative, that when you establish the proof, and this is another issue, when you aqama alayhi al-Hujjah, Fahim al-Hujjah, do they understand the Hujjah? Or, and, and, and this is another very big issue that we don't want to get into. But the, the point is, is when the truth comes, we strive our best to follow it because we do, are, we're responsible to Allah. With whatever we produce, whatever da'wah we give, whatever we follow, how we pray, how we give zakat, how we understand the religion, what aqidah we have, what aqidah we spread, we're responsible to Allah. What minhaj we follow, the methodology we follow, we're responsible to Allah at the end of the day. At the end of the day, none of my ulama are going to judge me. None of the, the shabab are going to judge me. It's going to be between me and my Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to make tawbah and we have to strive and be sincere in our heart to correct ourselves and correct one another and be gentle and kind with one another from Ahl Sunnah. This is the point. This is the point that I'm trying to, sh- to, to emphasize because this is what the text show us. Ta'wana la bitter wa taqwa. Cooperate in, 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 um, in righteousness and, and, and God-fearfulness. This is what the, the, the Ahadith Kathir mentioned about being easy on the people, being gentle with one another. And yes, there's a time to be shidda. There's a time to be harsh. But is that time uh, necessarily all the time and with Ahl Sunnah? You know, this takes fiqh. This takes knowledge and it takes understanding of the religion, how to practice those principles. This is fiqh fi deen. Man yuridullahu bihi khayran yufiqahu fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion, like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So myself, as far as this particular fitna, I don't have time to go into it, and I've spent way too much time already by even trying to prepare this little thing together. And we're going to end with a very important issue that to show that it's not for our place, not for the common people, and and even beginning students of knowledge to engage in these issues. Let's see exactly what Sheikh Salim and Fozan. And there's many statements of the Salaf, but we're going to bring it to people who are known to us in this time. To a very simplistic and clear statement which is bringing the point home. Qala Shaykh Salih bin Fuzan, Hafadullah Ta'ala, one of the Kibar ulama in this time, who his fadl, his fiqh, his knowledge is, uh, we, I don't think Ahl Sunnah has no, doesn't dispute about his, his position. Qala Shaykh, la yanbaghi li talabat al لطلبة المبتدئين لطلبة المبتدئين 
وغيرهم من العامة أن أن يشتغلوا بالتبديع والتفسيق لأن ذلك أمر خطير وهم ليس عندهم علم ودراية في هذا الموضوع وأيضا هذا يحدث أو هذا يحدث عداوة وبغضاء بينهم فالواجب عليهم الاشتغال بطلبة العلم وكفى ألسنتهم أما لا فائدة فيه بل فيه مضرة عليهم وعلى غيرهم This statement is like gold and let's listen to what the shiny gold has for us from this Alam Rabbani who starts, and what does it mean to be from the Rabbaniin that Allah always praises in the, 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 the Quran? It means those people, as the statement of Ibn Abbas in the tafsir relates that the Rabbaniin, they start the people out with the beginning Masail, and then they teach them the bigger issues. It's step by step, as is the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed the Quran in stages. You teach the people in stages. You don't take a new Shahada and you teach him, this person's off it, this person's off it. You need to know about Sheikh so and so. Did you hear what they said about this? No. This is not a direct uh, uh, attack on our brother, but this is unfortunately what we've witnessed over the years. We've witnessed it over the years. Some of our brothers fall into this mistake. Some of our brothers, and some people who are not even our brothers. Some people who claim to be from Ahl Sunnah, and we see that they're, call, they're causing so much fitna. What's your position on so and so? Well, so I don't even know the Arabic language. I don't even know who so and so is. Ma salama. We're going to give you, we're making hajr from you. Wallahi, this is a story that was related to me from a brother from Ahl Sunnah who was once a Sufi and he left that minhaj to become from Ahl Sunnah and then the people made hajr of him in a particular locality in America. Wa iyadu millam in dalika. What does Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan say about this kind of nonsense? Qala Sheikh al Alam al Rabbani. Qala, it is not permissible for the beginning student or other than them from the general Muslims that they busy themselves with tabdeer that they even inner busy themselves with tabdeer with tafsik and calling people innovators or calling people uh, fasics, uh, you know, wicked sinners and uh, the Sheikh also has statements about tikfir of course min baba awla because tikfir is even more serious and he says and this is because it is a dangerous uh, issue, and they do not have, do, they do not possess the knowledge nor the cognizance in this issue or this area. Also, this is what brings about enmity and hatred between them. Isn't this what we see between, unfortunately, many of the beginning students, people who aren't even students of knowledge, just because they blind follow, blind follow this dai or this one, and these dais have beef between them, the people hate each other, and they don't even know what it's about. And they may not even know how to pay zakat. They don't even know how to make salat properly. They don't even know to heat properly. And they're busy and hating one another about nonsensical issues. The Sheikh said, So this brings about enmity and hatred between them. And so, then he gives us the alaj. He said, It's an obligation upon them to busy themselves with talab al ilm, to seek the knowledge. And stopping their tongue, holding their tongues back on those things which have no benefit for them. Rather, in it is harm upon them and upon other than them. That takes no explanation. It's clear, it's simple. So I want to be and practice the advice of the Sheikh and clamp onto my tongue. Not speak about the issue of this particular Sheikh or other mashayikh if they're known for Ahl Sunnah and it becomes clear to me uh, that there's there, there's a difference unless the evidence becomes clear that yes this individual has went astray meaning they have kathar to akhta or they have done you know whatever the ulama especially those rasikhun of al-ilm have spoken about we go with that we go with that. But however, for us to busy ourselves, and especially busy ourselves with warning the people about mashayikh that don't have any relationship to the English-speaking world in general, that maybe one book is translated from this particular sheikh that I know of. One book, which is a very beneficial book about Ahl Sunnah and how they should deal with one another. But how 
And why would we benef- why would we uh, busy the people with this? And we ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us and grant us success. And may Allah forgive me for increasing and speaking about issues uh, for any mistakes that I may have made. And may Allah rectify our situation and bless Ahlul Sunnah to be one, one hand, calling to Kitabillah, wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the men heads of the Salaf al-Saleh, and rudding Ahlul Bid'ah, wa Ahlul tak- ahla Takfir, wa Ahlul Zandaka, wa Ahlul Kufr, wa Ahlul Nifaq, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.